I watched yours with Squid and... That was political as fuck. And that was a podcast designed to be political as fuck. No, but I did like it. I really, like, I like listening to it. Like, I love listening to that. I actually watched it with Squid. The whole thing? Yeah. With Squid? Yeah. Shut the fuck (laughs) up. That was a long one. Yeah, it was really long. I think we watched the whole thing, yeah. Or I at least did. He watched most of it with me. And Nick, too. And I actually really liked it. I felt like that was, like, really good discourse. Damn. All yeah. Right. Weird, weird, yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any expect- expectations, that, and yeah. I haven't really thought about it at all, so... Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, I, I fuck with that. I'm um, going you, into it blindly. You guys ready to dive in? Yeah. All right, guys. We got fucking Sierra, and we got Trey <laughs> in the mix, guys. Honestly, I'm pumped you guys came out here. Two people that just like you guys are on you guys are on the spectrum somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys yeah. are tapped into that side of the spectrum that I wanna connect with and bring onto the podcast. So you know what I mean? You. So like I feel like I've got a you know, some questions that, you know, I like, okay, maybe try and remember to ask them that you know, shit mm-hmm. like that, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. yeah. But one of the I'm just gonna say this flat out right now because I actually have thought about this a little bit. I was super pumped. I was at your guys' house um, this month for sure because then it happened this month. After your work shift. It was something like that. It wasn't the night I was eating at the house, I think. It was was another night. I think I came over twice this month. (gasps) But (laughs) some shit got brought up and I was like, yo, Trent, like I wanted, I still want to do that podcast we've been talking about for the last like three months. And then you, I've like, you were literally like, yeah, like, like let's set it up like let's do it this week or like you literally said like let's do it asap like you said like let's do it now let's do it tomorrow or like sometime in the immediate near future and i was just like okay like you seem serious about this because <laughs> like i was like i was like dude like that means it sounds like trent is down you know yeah. what i mean because we've I've been hitting you up to do this for a while. We've been talking about this. Yeah. Shit has came up. Totally. You know what I mean? Like a lot of random stuff has happened in the last like three months where it was just like this happened. And then like, I remember you went out of town for a little bit. Like we were doing like, like a month long quarantine here. Like there was, there was some interesting things going on, but yeah, dude, fucking I'm, I'm pumped that you guys made it out here. And it's honestly perfect timing because I feel like getting you on the podcast here, (laughs) you're going to be a really good, um, figure as well you thank know what you I mean? yeah, yeah thanks. definitely yeah. so that's where i'm coming from guys a very unique <laughs> yeah i've been thanks. looking forward to this for a while honestly so we've been talking about for too long yeah yeah <laughs> have you guys have ever done like a podcast like interview before or? Mm-hmm. no not at no. all yeah i have no expectations for this at all so yeah what are you guys doing right now like in your lives can we talk about that? Yeah. You were just in, uh, you said you were just in Ventura or Santa Barbara? Santa Barbara, Santa yeah. Santa Barbara, okay. Mm-hmm. And you're back in the area. I'm back, yeah. Um, it wasn't my plan, but like everything kind of changed. It shifted very quickly. And then Trent was like, move into the garage. And so I was like, yeah, I'll move into the garage. And you used to live in the garage. The garage is nice. Yeah. Oh, hey. No. Um, you, you're here for... A random amount of time. It's not um, set. No, now it is. Okay. Um, I was in Santa Barbara, moved home for like a few months with my parents. Um, and then it was like I was tentatively going to move down here in like April. And then it kind of just worked out that moving, moving here last month worked out really well. And so I moved into the garage. And then I was going to actually move to Nick's room because he was going to go to Alaska. And then he decided to stay. So now it's the four of us through June. That's honestly so. a very, like, fun amount of time. Yeah. Like, if it was a year, I wouldn't have said that statement. But, like, <laughs> like what can go wrong in three months? Yeah. Like, Nothing. it's 90 days. Yeah. Like, you're literally posted in a lit garage. Like, yeah. I feel like lit people are around you. Yeah, you know I'm really mean? happy. I feel like my Dude, life... they're all here right now. They're all here right now. <laughs> I know. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, ideally, I like look forward to like going home after work and like seeing people there and being able to like talk to them and catch up with them at the end of the day. I feel like it'd be kind of a bummer to like go to your home, to your own, to your own apartment, and be yeah, yeah, like, yeah, alone yeah. and not really have any. Yeah. I mean, I mean, ever like 
everyone to their own, but, you know, I feel like it takes, like, a certain kind of person to be able to, like, do that and also, like, truthfully enjoy yourself while doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, weird, weird. Mm-hmm. Dude, um, you're, you said you were working two jobs right now? Yeah. I went from working no jobs for, like, eight or nine <laughs> months to working two within, like, this last month. Yeah, so I've been working at Moondoggy Surf Shop for, like, about like a month now, I'm just working a couple days a week, and then I've been working at the Granada Hotel and Bistro bar backing, and that's been a pretty good time. And that's both jobs are in Slow. Yeah, both are in downtown Slow, like about two blocks away from each other. Where do you park? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, for Moon Doggies, you kind of have to scrounge around, and I mean, I usually go on Pismo Street or Pacific Street, and it's free all day. My car's oh, there right yeah. now, actually. Do you have to, like, ride the skateboard there? No, I walk. It's like a five-minute walk. Five-minute walk. Yeah. But at the Granada, I just park at the Union Bank right behind the building, and they don't really mind us parking there because they know we work there. Mm, Yeah. But the commute still sucks at the end of the day. Like, yeah, it's only, like, a a 15, 20-minute drive, but you also got to remember it's, like, a five, ten-minute walk every time both ways, so kind of wastes a lot of time at the end of the day. But, I mean, it's worth it. So you're doing a 20 minute ride, car ride there, and then you said a 10 minute walk? It was like a 5, 10 minute walk, 5, yeah. 10 minute walk, okay, so that's, okay. So you're commuting an hour. Yeah, you're still wasting like an hour a day commuting. Which... And that's on like the lower side compared to some fools. Yeah, you truthfully, I mean? yeah, like it could the... be so much worse. Yeah, yeah, I feel like a bitch for like just the 20 minute commute, but I mean, it adds up. You definitely think about it at the end of every shift. Guaranteed. Like, well, yeah. dude, and fucking humans are just... Dis- Humans are designed like, oh my god, if we don't get an eight hour sleep, we get fucked. Literally yeah. ball fucked. <laughs> yeah. Like, isn't that, guys, if if you only had to sleep four hours a day, we'd be living on Mars right now. Yeah. Imagine, okay, imagine if three hours was like an okay sleep. <laughs> but three hours, you're groggy and you can't fucking think the next day. I literally got, I told you guys, like, what, ten minutes ago? Like, I got a two hour sleep the other night fucking almost died dude like it was just it was horrible it was literally horrible yeah i feel like that was like freshman year though every night was like the least amount of hours of sleep possible yeah but you just had this like stamina that like (laughs) i I didn't actually feel (laughs) that bad ever now like now if i did that yeah yeah it's a lot harder now but Mm. still get it done yeah which job do you prefer more I don't know. I almost like having both at the same time because it's like such a different change of pace. Yeah. Like, I think I'd get burnt out going to either one individually. If I was at Moondoggies, I think it'd be really boring. I think it'd like the hours would kind of drag on. Whereas like at the Granada, I feel like it would almost be too much too quickly. And like they would like be asking for way too much. And so I feel like it's kind of nice having like the change of pace during the middle of the week and being able to spend the weekends at the Granada and then the weekdays at the Moon Doggies. But also, it kind of sucks like kind of wasting your weekends away there while like your friends are like hanging out and stuff. That's the thing. Like you make more in jobs like that. You make more on the weekends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, definitely. Like the the nine to five jobs. That's literally like always like Monday through Friday, like the salary based jobs. And totally. then I feel like the, the, like you said, you're working at a restaurant. I'm assuming you're making like tips, fast paced and shit. Like yeah. that, that's a weekend shit where like it would suck. They're working on a Tuesday morning, but yeah. like Saturday night, it's probably popping. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where the money's at. So, I mean, I can't complain, but it is kind of shitty having like a different weekend schedule compared to everyone else. Mm-hmm. You, and it's a hotel. Yeah, it's a hotel at the end of the day. Are you affiliated with the hotel? Like, do you get? can you get a room and discounts and shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, like, 25% off rooms. But, I mean, the rooms at the end of the day are, like, <laughs> $350 a night. So, 25% of that is, like, 70 bucks. Yeah, not much. Or yeah. probably more. Probably, like, 80 Yeah. 90 Let's go, <laughs> dude. 100. I mean, historically, our hotel is known for being in, like, the... Uh, they used to be known for being like in a like the brothel scene back in like the 20s and 30s when they first started yeah and so they used to charge rooms by the hour Ooh. and that <laughs> ceased to be a thing and then it became a bistro in like the 60s so pretty interesting history with that 
Okay, and then Sarah, you said you're doing some photography shit. Mm. What's this about? Um, I am just doing like senior photos for Cal Poly kids. Really? Yeah. They hit you up and you're like, yo, dude, like I'm an alumni. Just <laughs> or the moms hit them up. Yeah, the moms. <laughs> you know, the moms are worse because they're not worse. They're just like when the kids message me, they're like, Will you take my photo? I'm like, yeah, like, let's do it. We'll find a date. But the moms have, like, so many questions about everything. Like, they need to know every detail and, like, down to, like, the minute, have it, like, scheduled. And I'm like, we'll just go with the flow because I know it's, like, kind of, I don't know. I hate getting my picture taken. And, like, I assume most people do. So I'm like, we'll just, like, go with the flow, like, when we do it. But the moms are, like, pretty intense about it. And it's funny because... The moms that will reach out to me are always boy moms. And like when girls need senior photos, <laughs> they will reach out to me directly. And I think that's very interesting because boys will like never take the initiative to like get their senior photos done. But girls like always do. They're like on top of it. Why do you need a senior photo? You don't. <coughs> you don't? No. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people don't do them. I feel like. I do didn't. Like, we kind of. we kind of did i mean i did but yeah. i feel like a lot of like more people don't do them than do yeah did they i'm not graduated what about you Slick? she's supposed to take my photos. yeah when they do graduate <laughs> i'm taking their photos does it go in a couple of yearbook no so um <laughs> it's a do you imagine question. if we had a yearbook <laughs> <laughs> Well, there there is isn't like, a yearbook. That's impossible. There's, there's like 6,000 kids that graduate like Fuck, each year, dude. I think. Maybe more. Who knows? But yeah, it's like a pretty big industry in the area because there's so many kids at Cal Poly. Are you a business? Technically, yeah, as of last month. Damn. Yeah. What's your business called? It's called Sierra West Photo. Sierra West? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking funny, dude. Yeah. What the heck? Dude, it's legit. Do you it's have like a uh, like business cards and shit? I do. Not with me. Actually, no, I do have some with me probably, but Okay, so and like the Okay, so the senior photo, it gets taken, you print it out and process it, and then are you sending it out to people? Um no, I take all the photos and then I upload them to my computer, edit the ones that are good enough and then I upload them to like a gallery online and I send them the gallery and then they can do whatever they want with it and so it's they, online only mm -hmm. like you, you don't print a single photo no but if they order prints through the website that I use then I get a commission from it so it's kind of up to them I mean it's really expensive to order it from like the website I use why because I, I mark it up just so that I can, like, make a profit off of it. But if you were, like, to download them and order them from Shutterfly, it'd be a lot cheaper. It's just easier to order them from, like, the website that they're on already. Are you still making money even though they're not using the website to download it from? Yeah. Like, do they, they pay? pay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I still charge, like, a base amount. And then if they want to order prints on their own, they can. Or on, like, the website that I use, they can do that, too. Got it. Yeah. What, um... And how do they even know to hit you up? Like, aren't there... Like, I feel like there's a million cameras in slow. You're right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like everyone... I have a fucking camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, True. why you? Um, I think it's, like, mostly word of mouth. Like, really? I think so, yeah. Okay. Because I did a bunch of... I lived with a bunch of girls my third year that um, were in sororities. And I became pretty close with them. And then last year... A couple of them were asking me to take their senior photos and I wasn't going to do it as like a paid thing. And then COVID happened. So I stopped working both of my jobs and um, took all their senior photos. <laughs> and then I think that they just posted them and then other people in the sorority just started reaching out to me. And then it kind of just like... I mean, there are 6,000 people graduating every year, so there's not 6,000 people with cameras. Like, yeah, maybe sure. there are, but I don't know that all of them are doing, like, senior photos. So, and I was charging a lot less than, like, a lot of the... Yeah. Other I was going to say, yeah. I feel like the price point is pretty, like, important, too, at yeah. the end of the day. Because it's not like college students, when they're looking, are, like, trying to find, like, the most high-quality professional pictures for themselves. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's... But there are see like photographers in the area that charge like nine hundred dollars for like senior photos. Yeah. People pay that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you have to Damn. think about like most people that go to Cal Poly are like pretty loaded. Wealthy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, that's a generalization, but... Yeah. I no, well, so. that's... I feel like that's more of a fact, if yeah. anything. More mm-hmm. often than not, yeah. Cal Poly, yeah. yeah. You guys definitely have a lot of uh, people. <laughs> 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 Dude, yeah, Cal Poly's interesting. Cal Poly's for sure interesting. I feel like for me, in particular, like, don't get me wrong, I've, uh, like... I've met a few dope motherfuckers from Cal Poly, and I feel like I've met a ton of just stereotypical people. Like, both genders, not just male, not just female. Like, yeah. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. It, and it's not just Cal Poly, it's just the, the university effect. Like the, yeah. It's, for some people, it literally fucks them up, and they just mm. become this completely different person. Yeah. You know, yeah. with, like, walls, yeah. and it's totally. like, okay, I'm going to be this person, and I'm going to mm-hmm. be very normal, and I'm going to live, like, this exact life. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I you start know. to notice that after, like, you graduate, and you start to lose those yeah. expectations that you have, like, while you're there. I feel yeah. like it's pretty easy to fall into a trance, like, once you're in there and, like, kind of deep into it, but... Yeah. Well, I feel like people get, like, locked into jobs. I feel like that's, like, the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. It's, like, once you're in a job that you... Are like really stoked on or maybe not stoked on but it pays well <laughs> <laughs> then like that's kind of it you're like in one place and then you buy a house and then you get married and then you have kids <laughs> and they're and then they go to cal poly <laughs> or you, you said you were a cal poly graduate are you a cal poly graduate yeah. damn bro Guys, literally, congratulations. No. No. <laughs> education <laughs> education is important. You have something that is just invisibly there the rest of your life. Like, you get to put down on, like, documents and your own paperwork and your own resume. Like, hey, I have a bachelor's degree, motherfucker. Like, what's up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's something. Do you guys mind me asking your majors? Yeah, I was in environmental management and protection. No, that's <laughs> it. That's fucking like dope. Yeah, yeah. And then I minored in biology. Damn, Did bro. you? Yeah, I was stuck on it. Yeah. I didn't that's know G. that. That's totally. G. Yeah. That's what about crazy. You? Um, I studied um, psychology and criminal justice. They do criminal justice at Cal It's under the sociology major, but it's the like concentration. You have to pick a concentration, and that's the one I decided to go with because it was pretty interesting and i got to do a lot of stuff inside of like the jail and the prison on the one have you ever shot a gun <laughs> yeah actually dude nice. yeah <laughs> dude that would be dude would you ever become a police officer no a- no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> dude no you would dude you would be you would- okay please <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> don't <Stop>. say <laughs> You would be what the community needs, though. Oh, I thought you were going to say you'd be a great police officer. <laughs> I was going to have to stop you. You would be what the community needs. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take that as a compliment, but I just don't think that I could ever like align myself Social with that. Worker. What made you want to major in it or minor major? Um, I think... Well, when, like, people hear criminal justice, I think they think, like, uh, the police. Oh, my bad, my Wait, bad. No, 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 it's okay. I thought that, too, when I was, like, first getting into it, and I was like, I don't want to become a cop. Like, that's not for me. But it's under the sociology major, so it's more about, like, it's more about how, like, the criminal justice system is really fucked up rather than, like, this is how you become a cop. Um, there's actually, like, quite a bit of, like, cop hating <laughs> I feel like in like the major um but yeah I don't know I just took a class um that was like about race and the criminal justice system and then I feel like that's kind of just what happens is you just take a class and you're like this is what I want to do so and then I just I like got hooked on it and then ended up taking classes with the same professors who worked at the jail and the prison and then um yeah, I just declared it as my like concentration. So most of my classes for like the second half of college <laughs> were criminal justice classes. Would they like bark orders at you? <laughs> the professors? Yeah. No, no, they were really like. I mean, it's liberal arts. Like it's liberal arts. So it was like really 
like pretty mellow. Like they are not like the professors weren't affiliated with like the criminal justice system. Yeah. Aside from like teaching at the prison and jail. Dude, Trent, you said one of it was a good thing. You said this one thing this one time. <laughs> you Did were I? like we were talking about festivals. And then you were like, yeah, like, I forgot if it was a conversation directly with me or you might have been talking to one of them. I, I, I was guaranteed at your house and I was guaranteed living with you guys. But um, pretty much you were like, yeah, like, um, I think I asked you, like, yeah, what happens when you get, like, lost at a festival? <laughs> And then you were, you literally were like, yeah, like that happened to me and like, I still had a fun fucking time. And yeah. I was like, dude, if I got lost and I couldn't find my fucking friends at Coachella, <laughs> I'd have a miserable fucking time, bro. Dude. And Trent was like, oh no, like, dude, it was chilling. Like I tried to find them and I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, something that's definitely like expected when you're over there. The first time was that lightning in a bottle, like 2018 and... I had lost everyone my last night on Sunday night and I was with Ryan Templeton and we were watching <laughs> <laughs> we were watching Zoo set and we were so stoked rolling sack just living on such a fat high and he's like oh I gotta go to the bathroom and I'm like alright fine I'm gonna be right here like right now until you go to the bathroom and he's like alright sounds good and I'll see you later and so like, I'm like watching Zoo by myself at that point. We had lost the rest of our group. And I mean, at one point it w had been like 20, 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay, there's like no way this kid could have pissed and like came back. Or I, mean, I feel like it had just been too long for him to be able to go to the bathroom and like come back. So I was like, okay, like something's up. So I like, I'm looking around, literally cannot find him at all. And apparently he had been crossing paths with me and like was actually going back to the bathroom like as I was heading out. But at that point I kind of embraced that I was just gonna be by myself at the end of the night. And I mean, you don't have phone. I mean, my phone was dead actually. Like at that point by like Friday night or something like that, your phone is usually dead. I had like a bunch of like portable chargers and stuff like that. But when you're at lightning in a bottle, it's like 80, 90 degrees during the day and like my portable charger just fried out and I kind of had like nothing to like really rely on. So my phone was dead, portable chargers were dead and I was kind of just on my own like that Sunday night. So I kind of just embraced it and headed to the favela stage <laughs> and ended up just closing it out to myself. I mean, at that point, there's really not much else you could do. Your friends are like, will either be there or they won't be there. And so you kind of just got to accept it. and. Close out favela by myself at like four o'clock and then walk to the camp. A.M.? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when it closed. And then I can't remember the second time that I did it at Lightning in a Bottle, but I mean, it's definitely expected. You kind of got to like embrace it at the end of the day. It, so it's happened multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. It's happened like, like at least one night. Like every time I've gone. So that's a full night of being completely by yourself with this giant event that you spent hundreds of dollars on and you came with like a huge group of people. Yeah, exactly. Dude, what a good, uh, what a good perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally, I, I'm not bullshitting on what I like said. Like I'd be fucking miserable. Yeah. I'd literally be miserable. You definitely panic for a second. And it, does, it is pretty shitty, like not really having people there. Knowing that, I mean, by the end of the day, you kind of got to milk it out and like do what you can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty peaceful at the end of the day to be able to close out of like a set like that and not really have any distractions or friends that are like kind of there, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't by, like, choice or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, shit just kind of happens. But at the end of the day, like, I still enjoyed it. It was worth it. You said you were, like, on drugs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty fucked up. So, I mean, I, it's probably a lot easier to, like, forgive and forget when yeah. you're, like, that fucked up and enjoying yourself. But I'm sure if I was, like, sober or just, like, drunk or something, I would be, like, having a little panic attack and kind of worried about it. Sober or drunk? Oh, probably like sober. I'd be a little bit more, more nervous. I don't know. 
you kind of get a little bit more accepting as like you're kind of enjoying yourself and you're a little bit more fucked up. Damn. Okay. Yeah. What's been your favorite festival you've been to? Probably lighting in a bottle my first year. Really? It was like the most like eye opening experience I'd ever had. I yeah. I had really no intention of like. N- Do you have to stop it? Keep going. Oh, chill. Yeah. I mean, I I had no expectations coming into that festival. A lot of the music I was listening to was not in the same realm at all of what I was about to listen to at the festival. So it was like pretty interesting, like just kind of like listening to what my friends were saying. They're like, yeah, like you should definitely come. Like it's like the most fun you'll ever have ever. And I've been obsessed with like that kind of music since then. So like probably, yeah, that's probably the most like significant festival like that I've ever been to or I had like the most fun and we had like the most fun squad. I've been to plenty of other fun festivals, but lighting lighting a bottle my first year is probably the most fun, honestly. It just had that like group of people. Yeah, and it just had like that bright energy that like you could not lose with like the people you were with. Like yeah. it was just like so fun, and like I was with a lot of people that like hadn't been to anything like that before. So like being like like divergence for that kind of thing, or like was like pretty insane, honestly. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, That's super funny. When uh, when was that your last festival? Do you go to festivals too? Have you guys been to one together? No, I was actually as you were talking, yeah. I was like, I don't think Trent and I have ever been. I have like really bad luck at festivals, like weirdly bad luck. So I feel yeah. like maybe I need to redeem myself once COVID is over. Yeah. My last festival but. was at Snow Globe, for going into twenty twenty, like December tw- like thirty first, twenty nineteen, going straight into. You're like, it's going to be a great year. year. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Entering COVID with fucking Skrillex. (laughs) (laughs) Have you been to Snow Globe? Yeah? 20... Wait... I guess were we there? We the were, yeah, we were there the same year that you and Julian went. Yeah, what the we, fuck? yeah, that's crazy. We just like didn't really communicate that we were going or anything. We probably, I mean, I guarantee did not know you like I know you now, and I don't even yeah. know you now. I'm just saying, like, I feel like now I have your Snapchat and like I see you more than I've ever seen you before. Yeah, hundred percent. Which is still like microscopical compared, to, or like that's big compared to what it what like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. And I mean, I only went Sunday. I was there on oh, Friday oh. and was going to a lot of like the after parties and like the late night shows, but I didn't go to Snow Globe until Sunday night on like New Year's Eve when the ball was dropping. Did you only buy a one day ticket then? Yeah. I bought a one day ticket. Yeah. Damn. It was kind of a last minute stand. I was going to, I wasn't really planning on going until like a week and a half before. And I had a friend that was willing to pay for like half the ticket. For you? Mm hmm. Dude, what a homie. And she already had like, family friends that were staying in South Lake that weekend so I was like okay fine <laughs> damn dude that's yeah, funny it was super fun did you know uh, like Julian and shit yeah like, okay, okay. I did but not well enough to to know that you guys were there or anything like that I if I had known I would have definitely met up with you guys but it's also so hard in Tahoe with no service and you guys were there for like the whole weekend too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's um you probably didn't know him like you know him now. I feel like you guys kick with Julian pretty frequently. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Since he's been at Mandora lately, like <laughs> I feel like I kind of know him like at a very uh, at a very different level at, like, compared to like what I knew him, uh, compared to like when I knew him then. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Did you know Squid? So you, I know for a fact you knew Nick and Trent pretty well. Correct yeah. Me if I'm wrong. Well, Trent is like. It's my best friend. Like Are you I serious? yeah. Shut the front door. Yeah, he Damn. lived below me in the dorms and we like met probably like t- the first week of college probably. Yeah. yeah. Within like the first couple of days. I don't re- I don't even remember, but I feel like we like became friends really quickly and then um I met Nick freshman year too. But I wasn't really close with Nick till like second year. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Would you say she's one of your best friends? Oh, yeah, 100%. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. if not, like, my best friend. Really? Yeah. yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah. 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 I have no shame in saying that, honestly. Yeah. No, there should yeah. be no shame, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that, um, that actually brings up something. Um, I remember this one time, you... I think I was, like... 
I was guaranteed at your house. <laughs> I heard it, but um, you were saying to somebody, it was not me, guaranteed not me. I was just like in the kitchen whipping something up or something, but you're like, yeah, like, like, um, I'm going to butcher the memory, but pretty much you were like, yeah, like it's, um, it had something to do with hanging out with a girl and like how it's always good to have a, like a girl's input on shit. And I want to say you, Sierra's name was in that sentence. Aww. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That, that brings up a super good point. Like it's extremely important to be friends with girls. Yeah, definitely. Guaranteed. Not having that perspective it could be like very hurtful for like, like a, either a person or like a group of people, you know? There's people that say guys and girls can't be friends, and I personally disagree with that. Yeah, I don't think that's true. No, I think it's crucial. Otherwise, yeah. you say things like you don't mean to say, and you'll like think about things that you don't really think about that much mm-hmm. until you have that person or like that friend there to like be there and like say stuff that you might not want to hear. And I think mm-hmm. that's really important to have, you know. Yeah, I feel like at like our worst times in the last like five years. Like, we've, like, you've been probably, like, my most, I don't want to say, like, most consistent, because, like, I still have other friends, but, like, I've been closest to you consistently, like, over the last five years. Yeah. Like, through all, like, the really, really bad things, I feel like. Yeah, and I think that's, like, what really, like, catalyzed or, like, sped up our, like, growth in the friendship was, like, being there for each other in, like, those, like, bad times. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we didn't really have, not... It's not like we didn't have other people to, like, hang on to, but, like, at the same yeah. time, like, we understood, like, how, like, terrible things were at sometimes, and, like, we were always there for each other, and I feel like that's what, like, really, like, brought us together at the end of the day. hmm I mean, it kind of, like, overshadows the great times we've had, but at the end of the day, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, but I feel like the, like, great times get to be, like, amplified because we've, like... And I'm not talking, like, between us. Like, I feel like we haven't really had, like, shitty things. But, like, even, like, the first year we knew each other, like, you went through some shitty stuff. And, like, I feel like I was, like, with you, like, every day. Just, like, and then I feel like past that, like, the the good times are, like, amplified because we've, like, dealt with that stuff together. Yeah. yeah. 100%. It's, like, having, like, a really, really close. Like, I've never, like, I, like, love my brother, but we've never been, like, super, super tight. Like, I feel like that's what, like, you are to Mm -hmm. me, yeah. 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 Is your brother older? He's younger, but he's super, super different than me. Like, very introverted, and, like, I love him to death, but, like, I have to, like, pry things out of him, but, like, I feel like you'll just, like, tell me shit, and I'm like, okay, that's what I need. Like, someone who will just, like, tell me things, and, like, I don't have to, like, pry it from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you guys ever been, um, have you guys ever vented to each other? And being like, oh. and like, said, like, like every day. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? about each other? Mm-mm. Oh no, like just about anything, anybody. How are your days going? That's like every single day. Certain... Really? Yeah, there's yeah. not really like that many other people that I vent to. Yeah, <laughs> like when sh- when like weird shit happens, I feel like he's like the first. Like I got pulled over yesterday, and like I was the cop Where? was like checking my registration, and I'm like Trent. I just got pulled over, like texting him like immediately. And, I mean, we had been, like, talking before that, but, like, still, like... Did you get like, a ticket? No! Oh, God, oh my dude. gosh. I mean, like, entirely, like, white privilege. Like, I have to acknowledge that, like, off the bat. But I was, like, <laughs> going, like, 20 over the speed limit. Oh. And, um, he pulled me over. I knew I was going to get pulled over. I'd, like, just passed somebody. It was on, like, the 46 or the 41, one of those. Does and the 41 go from Morbid to Aetang? Yeah. Okay, so it was the 41. It was the... F- f- I don't know. Yeah, anyway, it could have been anywhere, yeah. It was one of those, like, single lane highways, and I was, like, going really fast. I had, like, just gotten off the 5, too, which is 70 miles an hour speed limit, so I was, like, cruising, like, still on that same, like, 80 miles an hour, just, like, going to town, and he pulled me over, and he's, like, I, like, I, like, had you going, like... 74 and a 55 and i was like yeah like (laughs) i'm not gonna disagree with you like i was going that fast and my um i didn't have like updated registration in my car and he like went back to like check to make sure it was all good i had like an old registration 
And he came back up to the car and was like, I'm going to cut you like a big break tonight and write you a fix-it ticket for not having your registration. And he's like, do you know how to how like a fix-it ticket works? And I was like, yeah, I've gotten a couple. And he's like, okay, well, they're significantly cheaper than a speeding ticket. And I was like, thank you so much. Like, seriously, thank you. And he just like, let me go. He's like, keep it under 70. You should be good. And like, let me go. Damn. That probably has something to do with being a female. Right. I think being a female and being white are like huge factors in that. Like, mm-hmm. and I would say probably being white like is like the primary factor yeah. in like in that situation. So <laughs> that's like I do have to say though, being female and like I I am like overly like polite when I get pulled over. You have to be or else you get yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah. Literally, you might get shot. And yeah. Like, Man, these cops are wild. But I have gotten pulled over like numerous times for like brake lights being out and they're like, you just have a good night, ma'am. Like, be, be safe out there. And like, they send me on my way and like nothing yeah. ever comes of it. So, yeah, I would say one of the rare situations in life where being a female is is um helpful beneficial beneficial, yeah yeah. advantageous to being male okay i'm gonna go pee real quick laser do you like this it's magnificent really magnificent some people try it and they're like that's not my drink it's pretty easy to drink huh it's like kind of like juice it's like amazing it's like it's like lemonade. <laughs> it's literally tastes like yeah. lemonade. It tastes like bubbly, perky, like nice lemonade that you can just like. I mean, I'm. I feel good drinking it. Mm-hmm. Like I feel healthy drinking it. Almost. Yeah. But I look down <laughs> right when I crack it up, and I'm like seven percent. Yeah, like, isn't like, that crazy? It doesn't taste like it. How much was this? Probably like a lot. Are you serious? No, a lot. Like as much as you think. Probably like six, seven bucks for one can. To Jeez. Yeah, I think so. I feel like five that's bucks. Not much. <laughs> I feel like, but I don't drink beer, so I have like a very skewed like perspective on Is, how much. You're saying beer is cheap. I think so. Fairly. Is that why you said I don't drink beer, so I have like a skewed? Yeah, like okay. I feel like this doesn't seem like a lot to to me, but I just like hate the taste of beer, so I would always like I would spend whatever money I need to to like not drink beer. <laughs> Why is my smoking as much as yours? Dude, it's it's honestly like you gotta light it like that and then you also have to suck it with the flame and just like get a little butane. <laughs> that looks like it lit. And then you literally have to like puff it like five times. Just to really like Yeah, 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 yeah. Did that work? Yeah, yeah. big big difference. Probably smells good, huh? My dad used to smoke them. Like I'm, I don't oh, think it smells bad so at all. So it's chill. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Where do we leave off on? I don't remember. <laughs> we were talking about. Um, it was past music festivals. We were talking about. Oh, getting pulled over. That's what we yeah, left out yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On the forty six. You know yeah. what? I was thinking when we had our bathroom break. I was like, cops get brought up a lot on Lasers podcast. I yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. had a cop on your podcast? I mean, I feel like eventually I'm going to. You yeah. should. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be a really good idea. You should. Honestly. Like one that I know personally well. Or yeah. Like, no, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah, someone honestly, that you don't know. Honestly, it should be someone from Slow PD. Yeah, yeah, we actually had a panel in one of my classes, and there was a couple. Um, there was like a officer and a detective from Slow PD. That. Um, came in to like talk to our class and answer questions and it was really interesting i think it'd be really exhilarating having like really uncomfortable conversations yeah. with the cop from like true Slobiti. true we had our panel like prior to blm getting really popular i don't want to say popular that's like a very like weird thing to say it just that. like people but, like are blew finally, up yeah, yeah like, like acknowledging like, it yeah. but that was like prior to that so i can't even imagine what the conversations would have been like had it been like during all of this going on yeah, I noticed right away, um, right when, I think I, s- like, pretty much you guys were, like, I immediately I got, like, yo, like, fuck the police from both your guys' vibes. 
You know what I mean? Really? Like, yeah. You guys brought up uh, <laughs> you guys brought up being white really fast. I noticed, mm -hmm. and like yeah. some other. And the thing is, you guys are completely right. Like I, I don't disagree with you guys. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the. That was the first thing we brought up and she got pulled over too. It was just white privilege. Yeah. It yeah, was like immediately like, I was like, I got pulled over. He's not and then you said like do you think he's gonna give you a ticket? And I thought he was going to. And then like the second he didn't. Also, we were Trent and I got pulled over once when he was driving in Santa Maria. And I did not get white privilege. No. <laughs> the guy made him get out of his car and like walk back over to the cop car. I thought Trent I had to. I thought Trent. I was. I thought I was like g going. Yeah. Like, I thought yeah. I, was, I thought I was gonna be in the Santa Maria like yeah. police department in like five minutes. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And then he walked over to me and was like, "Trent, what's, what's why is he so nervous?" And I'm like, "Bro, like this is his first time getting pulled over." I was going fast too. How fast? Like well, before he had like clocked me like a hundred and like three. But when he had clocked me, like, 95. Jeez. And I had my brake lights on and everything. And then, like, I kind of, like, stopped afterwards. Because, like, obviously, like, brake lights, like, past a cop would, like, kind of sus. But at that point, it didn't really matter. It was too fast. You were going 100? <laughs> In a 2005 Ford Focus. You're fucking I forgot hard, that it was bro. that car. That's asking for a ticket. Yeah, 100%. There was That's no traffic. And, like, the problem was, like... That day, I not meant to do that at all. Like I was gonna say, we were in no rush. Typically, whatsoever. like yeah, typically I am a fast driver. Like I usually would would have cruised at like 85, 90, which is like not like chill at all. But that day, like for some reason, we were just vibing super hard, and I had the music super loud, <laughs> and like we were just like in the middle of a conversation while that was happening, and I that was like the last thing I had expected, like. It was kind of one of those things where like, you don't really know how fast your car is going. Yeah. As if I was in like a like a Cadillac, like an Escalade, but I wasn't. I was in a 2005 Ford Focus. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, it felt like I was cruising, but like I was not. And there's no cars in front of me, no cars behind me, completely by myself. So I didn't really have any help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, dude, fuck, man. Going that, dude, do you guys know who's a speed demon in your household? Squid. Squid. Is squid. <laughs> <laughs> he already, like, did his time, though. Like, when we were yeah. when we were first getting cars, that's when he was going 100 in a 25. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just doesn't radiate that, like, that, like, vibe, though. No, you know what I mean? No. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't. I think yes. he does if you think about it. You're like, okay, like, this guy's... <laughs> He's a man on like, a mission. Like, <laughs> it makes sense. Like, I see what you mean, like, what you're saying. Like, initially, it's like, dude, this guy's not a speeder. He's a viber. But, but when you get down to business, it's like, dude, I can totally see Squid just jamming <laughs> the fucking the speed button. Just He's got places to be, people to see. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He well, okay. I feel like he just looks like someone that wants to go fast. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get him some speed goggles. After his DUI scare, though, I think he's learned his lesson. Honestly, at least I'd like to hope so. I mean, that had nothing to do with speeding, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't. Maybe he hasn't. Learned. Maybe he hasn't learned. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I would just like to hope so. But yeah, I'm pretty over going fast. I mean, I'll still go like over 80 for sure on the one, but I mean, I feel like I'm too confident with driving. That's the thing. Like, I feel like I get to a point where like, I know where the cops are going to be at. Like, <laughs> going to more bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least with the drives I do now. I mean, even like going back and forth between like slow and home. Like I felt pretty comfortable with like where I was and like where would they where they would be, but I mean obviously not. I learned my lesson pretty fast. It's kind of um, don't get me wrong when I say this. Like I I got pulled over. Thankfully I didn't get a ticket. Knock on wood. Um, I got pulled over sometime in twenty nineteen, end of twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty, somewhere around there. Like probably like a solid like year ago. I just, and I was speeding, but, like, going from around here, like, uh, slow to Morro Bay, like, I do that all the time, 
I just never got the point of going super fast on that drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, you know? That's totally fair. Like, for me, it's so easy. Like, dude, just go 65. You're yeah. chilling. You're big chilling. Yeah. Like, True. you save a fuck ton of gas because it's kind of hilly, you know? Yeah. yeah. I have yeah. a four-cylinder. I don't have a fucking Dodge Challenger. Like, I'm not, like, yeah. brapping around super hard, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Pe but people speed it though and it's like you're not getting there that much faster yeah you know what i mean oh yeah, yeah. i passed people today on the way to work that were right behind me on the santa rosa foothill intersection at the end of the day like they're right behind me and they, i didn't make any distance but yeah i grew up in like a suburb where like everything was like 15 minutes away like on the freeway so like it kind of did make a difference <laughs> you know what i mean when you're going like 10 to 15 miles, I mean, it, it like adds up, but you know, at the end of the day, after getting a speeding ticket, it's not really worth it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, uh, they make it to where that shit like keeps you down. Like your insurance goes up. You have to pay like a fucking giant, like $300 fine right away. Like, you know, there's even like classes you might have to take and it's just like all for the expense of like. Having your foot extended just a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that trippy to think about? It is, yeah. Isn't that trippy? Like, there's the argument of safety, but, you know, like, at the end of the day, what what's the difference really between um, 75 and 65? That's not a big I, difference. Really, yeah. you can't even tell. Yeah. No, 75 yeah. and 65, you're just, like, a little faster. Mm -hmm. Boom, pulled over, ticket, done, mm -hmm. you're done, go. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit happens every fucking day. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. Dude, I like how you guys, um, or I think you said it, but you're like, you guys talk about cops a lot <laughs> on the podcast. Well, I listen to a lot of them, actually. I've like, I went through the other day to go like watch one and I was like, damn, a lot of, because you know how it shows like red when you've watched a video, like the whole bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've like watched a lot of them because I, when I'm editing photos and stuff, I like to have like, some background noise. Background, yeah. yeah. And I prefer, like, listening to podcasts to music because I like, like, the... Learning. Yeah. And, well, I just like hearing someone, like, talking. Yeah. And so I'll have it on. Even if I'm, like, not watching, it's, like, nice to have it on in the background to, like, hear someone, like, conversating. And it's, like, nice because I never, like, shut up. So it's nice because I, like, can't be part of the conversation. So I just am <laughs> listening to, like, people... And I'm, like, thinking, like, this is what I would say, but then someone else says something completely different, and it's really nice to listen to. Like, that's while I'm, like, funny. doing mindless, like, editing or something. Damn, that, yeah, that's super funny. It's just, like, these people come on, and it's, like, they just have the funniest fucking cop stories. I know, like, and that's, like, I always listen, and I'm, like, no fucking way. Like, I have the most, like, vanilla cop stories ever. And, like, really? these people have Getting gnarly I don't stories. know if you heard the, um, the Johnny Teardrop story where like he asked for a bottle of water and the police like beat him down i did not watch slow. that one no after this if you guys want to watch it really fast i think it's fucking hilarious okay we I, should. I literally think it's comfy, <laughs> we but should. shout out johnny but you no know, he uh he was downtown slow and he was like he pretty much had a gnarly acid trip and was like picking up trash for like two weeks because like when you do a gnarly acid trip, some of those that's just happened where you're mm -hmm. still, like, high for, like, a while. He said the cops have been watching him pick up trash all week, and then, like, he was downtown slow at nighttime and, like, asked for a bottle of water, and it was, like, the same cops, and they, like, fucked him up. Because <laughs> they thought he was some, like, homeless dude. And this was, dude, this was, like, eight years ago. So, like, shit was a lot different eight years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? That, that impossible to happen, right, well, it probably happens right now, but, like, for slow, I feel like you just couldn't do that right yeah. now. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like everyone that comes on your podcast has, like, a pretty crazy, like, cop story. There's yeah. Been some funny <laughs> shit, but I've learned a lot, that's for sure. Yeah, that's funny. Um, you do acting? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I, I did. Grab? Or sorry, go. No, no. Go for it. I was going to say, can I grab another white glove? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I got you, bro. You see No, that? no, no. You that, You're bro? the host. No. Oh, Laser. Dude, that's fucked. That's fucked. What flavor do you want? Laser's flavor. <laughs> 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 I'm got him. 
Sorry, I didn't even end up handing him one. Was that a pun? Is that technically a pun or not? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's like only a pun if like it doesn't already exist. Or... I don't know. Yeah. But not really, no. Like some double meaning. Yeah. I don't think... <laughs> I mean... I don't decide these things, but it could be. What have you acted in? Just musicals in high school. That's it. <laughs> Nothing past high school? No, absolutely not. I did like a one minute monologue in my theater class in high, in um, college and I got a D in that class, so. What type of class was it? It was a theater class. It was like a lot more about like theater history than it was mm -hmm. about like, I was thinking, it's a GE. I was thinking like, I did musicals in high school. Like I'll get an easy A in this class. And then I took it. Nick honestly might have been in it. I think he was. That big theater class. Yeah. Yeah. In the um, and I like did really bad in the class, like poor, very poorly, like one of the worst classes I took in college. Very, very bad. A theater class is a lot different than being like a theater club. Yeah, I didn't like know that. that. Like I expected it to be like, get on stage, everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it wasn't. Was there any videos produced in that class that you took no, producing? No, no. There's videos from high school, but none from college. And you got a D in that? Yeah, I did very poorly because the tests were like hard. It was like who made like who made the camera in this year and why did they use it? It went like thousands of years like earlier than that, like the, the history of it. Fuck, my bad. <laughs> no, not your bad. <laughs> Don't say that. Um, well, dude, I'm always looking for actors. For, <laughs> for your skits. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I don't know that I could be like of great assistance, but I, I could give it a shot. Do you have anything in the works right now? Yeah. I'd Guys, love to know. I personally think <laughs> we just filmed the funniest skits I've ever been a part of two nights ago. Can you say anything about them or is it like top secret at this point? I can tell you all about it. Yeah. I would love well, to not, know. I'm not going to tell you the fucking plot line. No, 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 was, don't. Um, but... It was a doctor's. It was a doctor visit oh. where somebody goes to get checked for colon cancer. Yeah. And essentially get cured from colon cancer. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Did you? Do you I don't think of the details until do it you comes out? Think of all of these. Dude, I want to say I thought of this one in Oregon, and I was just like, dude, like imagine if that was on camera. <laughs> Imagine if this like thought and idea was on camera and then it happened a couple nights ago so it fucking worked out, you know what I mean? That's awesome. It's just so like it's so fucked up, dude. There's gonna be some shit that like <laughs> occasionally like there's I feel like there's whenever I post something there's always like something that somebody like texts me about and they're like, dude, you have to take my name out of this or like like you're fucked in the head for putting this out there, like this and that. This one, it's gonna be like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just second guessing. But yeah. it's going up. It's staying up. Yeah. And, um, I think it's. I think it's fucking hilarious. Do any of your vid are any of your videos able to be like monetized, or do all of them be like become de demonetized? Ooh, I know monetized has to do with money. What what do you mean by that? Like though? YouTube, do they demonetize your videos? Like, in terms of what? Because I don't like make... ad revenue. Like I'm pretty sure like demonetization means like the ads don't like the ad money that comes in from the ads that might play on your YouTube videos doesn't go to you if they're demonetized. And typically that happens I think when it's like like any like thing inappropriate or like. Sometimes, like, family YouTube accounts get, like, blocked, I've heard of, because, like, YouTube has, like, decided that, like, people shouldn't, like, exploit their children for, like, <laughs> YouTube money. Or, like, the comments get disabled. Got it. Um, I don't know. I don't really know much about YouTube, but... 
Can, I mean, one, I know I make no money off of YouTube, and okay. two, can I control whether there's advertisements in my videos? Because I do not want zero advertisements in any of my videos. I think at this point, everyone's videos have advertisements at the beginning. Have any yeah. ads popped up in my videos? I can't remember, honestly. I feel like I'm so, like, desensitized to it that at this point, I don't even, like, recognize if there's ads or not. Because there's so many on YouTube. Like, I remember when YouTube had no ads. And, and it, was was like, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was literally yeah. great. Yeah. And that's the thing. I definitely want to keep it that way. Um, if, there's, if there's a way to control no ads, like, even if I was getting paid money for it, I mm -hmm. would keep ads out of it. Because when you listen to a podcast or you watch a skit or you do this and this, there's not supposed to be a fucking 15 second interruption. There's yeah. not supposed to be. Or with yeah. YouTube, like a three minute interruption. I was gonna say, they're Sometimes. way longer than like, 15 it's seconds. It's fucked up now, really. I d yeah, I don't condone any of that and I do not want it in any of my videos. Yeah. Obviously if YouTube physically does it and I have no control of it, I guess that's to be what it's gotta be. But if there's like, you know, cause I know, I mean one, like, there's for sure YouTubers where it's like there, there, you know, there's ads like part way through and shit. If I can mm -hmm. control that, I'm never gonna have any of that shit. Like, I think that, that you can to a certain extent. Like some YouTubers can like place the ads throughout their videos. Oh really? Mm hmm. And you can choose to have more or less. And if obviously if you have more, then you like make more money. But I think like if there's like I would. I would assume that your videos would probably get demonetized just because of the nature of them. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, some YouTubers will have, like, five ads throughout the video and, like, make bank off that. I know I definitely get copyrighted shit. Yeah. Because I, and a lot of my, um, and we can do this if you guys want, but, um, in a fair amount of the uh, podcasts, there's always like a 30 second like intro clip. Like Julian's, you guys yes. watched that. Yeah, oh, yeah. we did watch Julian's. <laughs> that was so fun. Shout out Julian. Shout out Julian. Yeah. We watched your podcast <laughs> the day it came out. Copyright flag because I used that song. Yeah. Um, but I mean, dude, I like, I like putting music in my shit. You know, yeah. It kind of makes it kind of like, uh, you know, like it. Gives you a second to like, oh shit, I forgot my lighter in the other room. I forgot my beverage in here. I'm going to go grab that shit. And there's some shit thumping in the background. Yeah. Like, let's fucking go. You know what I mean? It says, That's yeah. extremely thoughtful of you to do. Yeah, add some spunk that like, yeah. you wouldn't want to like. Like that's you something you, you are do. like doing for your audience, not for yourself. And that's like extremely thoughtful of you to do. Dude, thanks guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Julian's intro episode was like really fun. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like hung over, like cleaning the couch. And yeah. <laughs> Hanging onto the bed that he's on like every night. <laughs> you moved here like partway through like high school or middle school, right? I came here to the Central Coast after eighth grade. Okay. Yeah. So who was like your first friend? Was it one of the people you're still friends with now? Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. They were for sure some of my first friends. Taj was like, actually I like met Taj as like one of the first people I fucking met. First period, Miss Dallas Klaus. Shout out to Taj. Um, <laughs> we were in that class together. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was really good friends with Evan freshman year. Mm-hmm. Vince, I would say we were friends. We, for sure, freshman year, definitely not the beginning of it. It just, it took a while, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, I probably wanted to be friends with Vince more than he probably wanted to be friends with me. <laughs> and then, like, just persistently, I just was like, dude, I want this guy as my fucking friend. Um, yeah. And it worked out. Now yeah. you guys are roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Vince is, Vince is literally, like, a big homie. I was super happy when he hit, he hit me up and he was like, yo, like, I'm, uh, Moving back down from the bay for a little bit, like, what you doing? And I was just like, dude, I need to live with you. That's like, so good. Like, he yeah. he was interested in living somewhere, and, like, I was literally, like, looking to move back to the area as well. And then mm -hmm. this was just, like, the plug. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He made shit happen, for sure. Mm -hmm. Dude, um, what's your guys' gnarliest story? Do you guys have a gnarly story? You guys have to. I mean, every person has a gnarly story. Or, like, it doesn't even have to be physically gnarly, but even just, like, 
I'm going to live my life like this because of these influences and the things that I want to do and pursue. You know what I mean? Like, do you get like, what's something you guys can just throw out on the table right now if you guys want? You go first. <laughs> I don't know that I have one, but... Yeah, I feel like your perception of a gnarly story might be different than mine. No. <laughs> well, maybe, but I want to hear it. Um, this, dude, you might have the craziest story anybody's ever heard. That's the funny thing. I mean, I can tell you about, like, my second night at this last lightning in a bottle. Where I was, like, the most fucked up I've ever been in my life. Do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was me and my buddy Logan Deeney. Shout out Logan Deeney. This Saturday night at Lightning in a Bottle, and uh, we had asked Nick if, if we could borrow his ketamine. And we he ended up giving us his bag, and at the end of the night, like, Deeney and I ended up, like, getting really fucked up in this treehouse at Lightning in a Bottle at the favela stage. And at one point, we like got to a point where we like couldn't go down the treehouse, and so we ended up <laughs> making friends with this group from Oklahoma that also happened to be like in the same boat. And we we're like, "What's up, guys? How's it going?" And they're like, "Dude, like, <laughs> I don't know if we can get down here." And we would look at like the ladder of the treehouse we were in at Favela. We were at this stage called Favela, where it was like a bunch of like tree houses like around the stage and we got to a point where we really couldn't get down <laughs> and there was a point where like I've never like my reality has never been more altered to a point where like I didn't know where I was like didn't know who I was and like I've never seen my vision or like my like any senses like get to a point where they've been like that skewed, you know? And <clears throat> like at one point my vision was literally like a, like a, I'm trying to think of it. It's like almost like being like a crystal ball, but looking like from the inside out to where like, it almost seemed like I was in like a three dimensional like soccer ball where like there was like a bunch of like different like you know what I mean? There was like, like a kaleidoscope? Yeah, it was almost like a kaleidoscope kind of thing where like your depth perception was like so off that you had like had no idea where we were. And I would look at the ladder that we were at, like at the favela stage, and we like literally like could not get down if we had tried. And <laughs> somehow we did. I mean it was like probably like three in the morning by the time we were like coherent enough to go back to the camp and really, like, yeah, we should probably go back home. And we got back to the camp. And I ended up, like, seeing people at the camp that, like, weren't there at the festival. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, like, hallucinating people? Yeah, like, I saw my buddy, Blake. <laughs> so, like, we were, at one point, we were at the campsite sitting down at the camp chairs, like, forget, like, the whole walk home. Like, that was the craziest shit I had ever been through. And we got to a point where... Like I saw my buddy Blake sitting on a camping chair and he wasn't even at the festival at the time. And he was sitting next to a girl in like a red like cloak. And it honestly like kind of reminded me of like Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine like our like our buddy like Blake brosing and he was next to this like almost like not like yeah, kind of like a young like girl that was like in like a red like cloak and I had noticed them and I was like, hey guys, what's up? And I looked away and looked back and the camping chairs were empty. <laughs> and, I never heard this story. Yeah, and Blake was nowhere in sight of like, he was like hundreds of miles away and the girl was not there at all. And I like looked away and like went back to it and it ended up being just like two empty chairs and I mean I feel like that's all I remember from the rest of the night it was pretty yeah. wild honestly that's like not really the craziest story that I have but like definitely like no that sounds fucking crazy definitely like the that most that sounds crazy definitely like the most fucked up I've ever been in my life honestly 
we were just like, well, what is... That? Was that your first year there? No, it was my second. Okay. How many yeah. times have you been? Just two. Just two? Okay. Yeah. This is your, okay, so you're high as fuck on ketamine hallucinating. <laughs> Not even just ketamine, but like other things too. Other things? Yeah, it was probably like a combination of other things that like really like put me over the edge, honestly. But... <coughs> oh, fuck. Are you good? I just smell that. Um... <laughs> Dude, are you, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I actually did really like that. Just sparked something. I really did want to bring up ketamine tonight with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been brought up multiple times at this point. <laughs> You've done it more than once. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, and we briefly talked about ketamine at your guys' house that one time. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that conversation. I think I tried describing it to you, and you're like, nah, son, nah, son. <laughs> <laughs> you'll learn, Trent's you'll like, learn. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, like, what is ketamine? Can we start with that? Uh, it's like a th- synthesized chemical that... Synthesized as fuck? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not natural at all. Like, a lab-produced chemical at the end of the day that is, like... I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Yeah, I have to pee too. This conversation, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like a sedative that is like literally like a tranquilizer that's designed for horses. But I mean, don't really know much. Don't really know too much more about it besides the fact that it's like not the best for you. <laughs> Well, no, there's there's the argument that it resets a lot of things in your brain. Yeah, I mean, all de- it all depends on, like, the like the way you use it. Like, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like, ketamine is, like, a prescription drug that, like, people could use for, like, anxiety and things like that. Like, people have, like, ketamine prescriptions. Like, not for, like, the reasons that we use it, but at certain doses and things like that, like, it, it isn't as, like gnarly as it could be you know it could really have like beneficial purposes if you'd like it to yeah i mean that's that's what it sounds like i mean what what do you feel like it does to your perception of reality i mean like what's it feel like like if you did a line in ketamine right now you would feel it, or am I tripping? I get pretty rocked. Okay. Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yeah, like the tolerance is only there for like so long, but like if you take it in high doses, like I did, like that night at Lightning in a Bottle, like you could definitely get like an out of body experience, which is like what I had like that night. Like there was a time like at that stage where I felt like there was a second me holding myself like in front of my actual self you know what I mean that's like the most out-of-body experience I've ever had where like it felt like I, I was almost holding myself like in like behind myself and like keeping myself up at the same time that's trippy yeah that's trippy as fuck and it's not like I saw anything or like anything like that I just like felt it and like sensed it but um, it could definitely put you in a place where like you've never been before, which is like pretty interesting to me at least. Do you still see the same colors? Like, is this would this still be blue for you? Yeah, hundred okay. percent. I mean, things are definitely like a little bit amplified and a little bit distorted. But at the end of the day, uh, things don't change that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You. Do you feel like your motor functions have been decompressed? Like, like, at the time you couldn't go play a soccer game. Oh no four chance! Lines of ketamine. Oh no chance! Yeah, your like motor skills and coordination like fall off. Yeah, fall off a cliff like pretty quickly. Yeah, it's pretty easy to lose that. But I mean, it's for like the right time at the right place, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Would um, 
Do you recommend ketamine for like anybody? No. Like, do you think it, everyone should try it once? No. Why? I feel like you kind of have to be. Well, I don't know. I feel like you kind of have to have like some like mental. Uh, you know, <laughs> what am I trying to say? You have to mental have, tolerance. Yeah, yeah. You have to have like some mental tolerance and have like some experience with like other stuff before that. I feel like if some someone that has never done drugs like that could be like very overwhelmed very quickly in that sense. So, so I don't, I don't suggest it to like everyone or anyone. Did it, and you would say it's more of a, um, what's the opposite of a stimulant, a downer? Yeah. Is like that a, what it's called? Like a depressant or something like that. It's, it's more of a decompressant. Yeah. Or stimulant. More of like a hallucinogen, honestly. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I've never seen things that I've seen on that, like compared to like any psychedelic I've ever done. You've done acid? Yeah. In shrooms, and I've never seen anything on those that I've seen on ketamine. Are you serious? Yeah. I would think Like seeing my friend Blake and like little red riding hood on the chair, like outlining a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Like, has put me in a place where, like, I don't think that I could ever see anything like that again if I wasn't on anything like that, you know? That's literally crazy. Yeah. I would think it's complete flip around. Like, on acid, you'd have all these visuals. You're saying on ketamine, yeah. you had all the visuals? I mean, not just that, though. I mean, that oh, was after, okay, like, okay. doing, like, multiple points that night and, like, okay. on top of other things. Okay, so it's okay. kind of like, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. I'm just really excited for you to be able to like know so much about us in such little time. Like, not like we're like pressured to like say that much about us, like that you didn't know anything like that. But yeah. I feel like it definitely like, accelerates that process at the same time. Definitely, you know, just a little bond. Mm -hmm. I mean, just sitting around the campfire and you know passing some bottles, some smoke in the air. You guys are sipping on, or you guys are eating some gummies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's. Ooh, okay. I bought. I was not gonna get them at Campus Bottle, but then I was like, "How could you just not pick Sour Patch Kids?" Were these expensive at Campus Bottle? No. Oh. <laughs> so you just weren't gonna buy them? Yeah, I was like, "Who needs that?" Okay. But then I used to eat these like every day of freshman year. Like I'd buy a new bag every day. Every day. Basically, yeah. I had this mm -hmm. class where it was like a. It wasn't like a lab, but it was just like a three-hour like drawing class. And he was like, "You can have whatever you want. Like do what you want in this class." So I'd go to Campus Market, pick up a patch, a pack of Sour Patch Kids, and like eat them throughout the class. And I'd like eat a whole bag. <laughs> you, you must have had a mouthful of cavities. I've never had a cavity in my life. Are you kidding me? You have strong ass teeth. That's fucking genetics. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> you could. That was the worst ash I've ever done. On myself. Dude, those shorts look nice and comfy. Yeah, they do. They and they're are. called Rhythm. <laughs> yeah. I'm stuck down them, honestly. Corduroy shorts, shit. Fire me up. Literally, those are dope as fuck. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, dog. So, are you... If you're vetoing your craziest story, I do have a backup question. Mm -hmm. But choose wisely right now. Can I hear the backup question? Okay, I'm going to have to go with a backup question. Because I just don't... I've led the most average life, like, of anyone. It's so average, like... I feel like you got it, though, dude. I feel as though I have, but... You went to Cop Bali, not average. Not be, the average person does not go to a four-year university. Mm -hmm. Straight out of high school. Yeah, I graduated early, but, like, I went with, like, my same, like, age group. You're living with a house full of grown ass men in a garage. <laughs> You're taking yeah. grown ass men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the average height, the average height in your guys' household. Is That's true. Six two. Yeah. That's Literally, true. The average household. I bring it down like at least five inches. Like the average. Well, is excluding down. you. Excluding. Okay, you. excluding me. So you got Squid, who's like six five, and then you guys are like six one Shut and a half. Is he that tall? He's, Squid got like an inch on him. He's, he's probably six, like four. six three he's or six four. four. Yeah. Really? Yeah, indeed, yeah. How tall is Nick? Over six, easy. You and Nick six are probably foot. the same. I feel like I have like an inch on A little Nick. bit taller? Yeah. Wow. 
Squid Damn, juice. I need to introduce all my friends to you guys. Every girl's like, bro, I need a guy when it's 6 p.m. I'm like, I have three eligible bachelors. <laughs> Okay, sorry, your question. No, no, and that, that kind of, <laughs> you kind of took us to the question, but I was going to say, like, what's it like being a girl right now? Because literally one of the only things I see on Instagram right now are, like, all these advice tips from these other girls that I'm following that I'm even friends with some of them, and they're, like, um, for example, I saw a lot of people last week posting this thing, and it was, like, this shared, like, viral thing, and it was, like, like, what do you do when you see a girl walking down the streets? And then there's, like, all these, like, uh. tips, advice, and, like, rules to follow. Um, like, oh, yeah. like, don't fucking follow too closely. Like, go on the yeah. other sidewalk, this and that, and, like, all these things. And I'm, like, don't stare. Don't stare. Shit like that. And I was, like, for myself, I'm, like, okay, like. I mean, sometimes you're legit walking to the same place. And, like, me personally, like, I don't have any intentions of doing anything harmful. Mm -hmm. Nor, I mean, I guess, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you guys could say I look harmful. But, like, I'm not out there to fucking kill somebody. What's it like being a girl right now? Because I know a lot of people are posting this. So, and I feel like you'd be a good person to ask. You know what I mean? Because, like, yeah, it seems like a lot of girls currently in this state of, like, reality, honestly, are, mm -hmm. like... It almost seems, like, scared of, like, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that's a new thing. Okay. Like, I will preface it with that. Okay. Um, I feel like that's, like, something that, regardless of, like, race, regardless of, like, stature, regardless of anything besides someone, like, presenting as a male, like, if you're alone and you're a girl especially like at night walking to your car walking home like it's just an uneasy feeling to to know that there is a man or men like around you regardless of how like safe they look i guess um i definitely like for sure throughout college like i was like definitely the type of person that would like run home from parties by myself like because i was like i'm ready to go like i'm not waiting for the uber and i would just like dip and go by myself which like was my own choice but for sure like that was always a concern like a way bigger concern than anything else was like being alone like as a girl being drunk on my way home and like wanting to just like go for a walk, like walk home or run home or whatever I chose to do from a party. I would say like now um, it's like people are bringing more attention to it, which is good. And I think there are a lot of things that guys can do to make women feel more comfortable when they're on their own walking or um, on a run or just like anything really. Um, and I think for a really long time, girls have felt like it's their burden to bear to, like, make themselves feel more comfortable, and I just, like, don't think that that's, I don't think that that's, like, the best option. Like, I think men can definitely, can definitely accommodate women better and, like, do the things that are necessary to make women feel safer walking alone running alone like doing anything alone especially at night and especially in like more secluded places like there have been times for sure where like i have not had the option to like walk alone at night by myself because someone's genuinely been concerned like the the main and only concern has been like other men if that makes sense so I feel like there are definitely things guys can do to make women feel safer and I don't know that like I'm not gonna like sit here and like say like this this and this because I think for every woman it could be different but I would say like as a general rule like just not being creepy like I don't feel as though it's that hard to not be creepy and I feel like a lot of men like miss the mark on that I don't know if that answers your question 
A plus. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was pretty good, honestly. <laughs> well, okay, and I just, like, I'm sorry that it's gotten to this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really am. Mm-hmm. I for sure 100% am sorry. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's fucked up because I'm the type of person where I think if female finds it, and I, I literally, you guys heard me say this on Julian's podcast, the first minute and a half i was like if you think a girl's attractive girl thinks you're attractive you guys should literally just have sex it feels good for both of you guys and you guys are probably gonna have a fun time but because of literally everything you just said that that's such a big preventative thing from not even happening you know what i mean yeah that, yeah a like, lot of things it's like oh my god like i don't want to hang out with this guy or like i don't want to fuck him like i don't know who, who he is you know what i mean like it's, yeah there's a lot of steps before that that you don't really like think about. yeah yeah and i think too and i don't want to generalize here but i think that women typically feel extremely uncomfortable like saying no to men because they don't know how like their no is going to be perceived because like in the past it could have been perceived as like a challenge or it could have been taken as like them potentially even like flirting and so a no could have been taken as like not a no anything else besides a no and so i feel like it's really difficult and i've spoken to other friends about this to like say no to a guy because you're very afraid of like what his reaction might be or if like i've heard like many girls say like oh i feel like i might have let him on like now i have to have sex with him which is like super fucked up like and there's no way that girls just come to that conclusion themselves like they've had things in their past that have led them to like that conclusion that like if you flirt with a guy you have to have sex if you kiss a guy you have to have sex if you do this with a guy you have to have sex like that 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 guy's going to assume that any anything that has happened prior automatically means that there's going to be sex is like pretty scary if you think about it and i know plenty of girls like plenty of really close friends that have hooked up with guys because they're too afraid of what could happen if they don't so i don't know if that answers your question either but that's just like i do understand what you're saying like if a guy and a girl find each other attractive, I am totally, like, no, like, sex shaming whatsoever. But I do think that there's more to, like, there's more of a conversation that needs to be had about the pressure girls feel to, like, fulfill that expectation to have sex with a guy that they've flirted with, kissed, a guy's bought a drink for them at the bar, like, anything. And I think that that's, like, a huge issue that, like, almost every single girl I know has like run into at some point, especially in college. Yeah. And it's like very much so an issue that's been unspoken of. Yeah. Like it's not a new thing by any means. And I don't want to like, I'm sorry to like end it on like this super like heavy note, but like, no, 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 no. it's, it obviously needs to get talked about if people are talking about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally it it has to get talked about. And the thing like when I said that thing a second ago, like, Oh, like, you guys find each other attractive, just mm-hmm. do it. I'm not... I, I agree with everything mm-hmm. you just said. Yeah. And I'm... I wi- like, I agree with everything you just said, and I wish the answer... Like, I wish that could get fixed, and then my, like, perfect utopia you philosophy could yeah. exist. When everyone felt comfortable. Safe. Yeah. Everybody felt safe. Females, guys, I f- everyone was on an equal playing field, mm-hmm. and that just happened naturally yeah you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and one day that easily could happen it easily could happen and Mm -hmm. one of the big preventions of why that's not happening is because of your answer like Mm -hmm. like guys have fucked it up that hard yeah you know just on some like primitive like ape shit like Mm -hmm. like just like guys have fucked like the male like you know what I mean? Like, it, mm-hmm. yes. it, it's just, it's it's been fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's say a girl's walking her dog out mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and I walked up, not, like, fucking directly walked up to you, mm-hmm. but I was just like, hey, how's it going? They're then get fucking scared, and I don't yeah. blame them. I literally don't blame them because of all the shit that's happened, but... Yeah. Yeah, For dude. Sure. That's, that's... You guys heard it from them first. Guys, this is Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is Trent. Heavy um, note to end on. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's a great note to end on. It is a great note to end on. It's super important, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. But thank you for having us. Guys. This has been, I feel like the yeah. hour and a half, two hours maybe, We're, have like flown by. Since I've pressed play on this, we're at an hour and 44. It Dude. like has felt like 10 minutes. Yeah, it went like quick. Yeah. <laughs> but um, guys, thanks for coming on for real. Yeah, for real. cheers. Thank yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, speaking of uh, 